This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how you can create this lava text effect using GIMP. And if you'd like to learn more about how GIMP works, be sure to check out the GIMP series, which is a collection of over 60 videos that I created where I go over all of the major tools and features in GIMP and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check that out. So to, let's go ahead and get started here in GIMP. The first thing I want to do is create a new document. So I'm going to go to File, New, and I'm going to create a new document sized at 1920 by 1080 pixels. Click OK, and I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so I can see the entire document. I'm going to hold Control and roll down the mouse wheel just to zoom out. I want to be able to see the entire canvas. And I want to fill the canvas in with black. So I'll go to Edit, Fill with Foreground Color. And that's going to fill it in with black. And what I want to do now is just swap around the, uh, the black and white here, the foreground and the background with this little rotate icon because I want to add some white text now. So I'm going to grab the text tool. I'm going to click on the canvas and I'm just going to type in lava for the sake of this tutorial. Uh, you can use whatever font you'd like. You may have to adjust the sizing. I have my sizing already set because I was previously working with this. Uh, and once you've, done, once you've done that, you can just grab the move tool and put this towards the center of the page. What we want to do actually is go to layer, crop to content, and then we want to grab the alignment tool. Make sure you have your uh, make sure you have this set to image where it says align. Set that to image. Click on the text to activate it, and then center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. And now we can grab the move tool just to disable those boxes there. What I want to do with this is go to layer, uh, layer to image size, and then I want to go to I want to right click on this text layer right here and go to alpha to selection, and then I want to delete that layer by clicking this little X right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer on top of this. I'm going to click the button that says create a new layer and add it to the image. Click OK. And I want to take this selection here and distort it a little bit. So I'll go to select, distort. And these are the presets I want to use right here. 127, 8, 4, and 5. And then both of these checks. So go ahead and make sure that yours matches up with this. Then go ahead and click OK. And that's going to distort the outline a little bit. And what I'll do now is go to edit, uh, edit fill with foreground color and then I'll go to select none and there we have our distorted text so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take this layer I'm gonna click and drag this beneath the background layer so it's out of the way and then I'll click on the background layer right here and I wanna grab the um, the lava texture I'm gonna put a link in the description uh, to all of the things you'll need in this video you'll need two textures and one brush pack so uh, check the uh, the link in the description uh, grab the lava texture and just place it into GIMP. Click and drag it into GIMP like that. And what I want to do is I want to take this text layer. I want to create a duplicate copy of it. I want to bring it on top of the lava texture. And then I want to click on the lava texture. I want to um, grab the uh, unified transform tool which is over here. What I usually do is press shift T on the keyboard. It's a lot quicker. And then you can click on the activate the lava texture right there. Click on that and then grab one of the boxes over here in the corner. Click and drag and then hold shift and alt to scale it down like that. We want to make it so that the lava texture is just slightly bigger than the text right here. But we don't want any of the text sticking out from the from the uh, from the lava texture there. So just make sure it's slightly bigger like that. Press enter and then go to layer layer to image size. And I'm going to create a duplicate of that lava layer by clicking this button here. And I'm going to click and drag this beneath the background layer because we're going to need another copy of that later. So what I'll do now is I'll take this lava texture. I'm going to click and drag it to the top. I'm going to layer it on, layer it on top like that. I'll go to Colors, Saturate, bring the saturation all the way down. Click OK. Go to Colors, Invert. And then I want to make these cracks here a little darker. As you can see, they're, they're, they're not quite black. They're dark gray. I want to make them a little more black. So I'll go to Colors, Curves, and I'll take this bottom node down here and I'll slide this to the right. You'll notice the cracks turning darker as I do that. I want to bring it to about there. Right about there is good. I'll go ahead and click OK. And what I'll do is the text layer beneath it, click on that, right click it, and go to Alpha to Selection and then go ahead and delete that layer. We don't need that anymore. And now we can click on the lava texture layer, go to select, invert, and then just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of the uh, all of the, uh, the, the texture outside of the text there. If you're using Mac, you'll just have to go to edit and clear as opposed to just pressing delete. Uh, what we can do now is go to select, none. And as it stands right now, the black area here 
where the cracks are. This is black. I don't want that to be black. I want that to be transparent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to colors, um, color to alpha. And where it says color, I'm going to change this to black. Click OK. And I'm going to bring up the threshold a little bit. And you're going to notice more of the black area showing through there. That's not actually black. It's actually transparent, which is what we're going for there. And we can go ahead and click OK to finalize that. And what I'll do next is I'll go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. We'll use the default here, which is 1.5. Go ahead and click OK. And then we'll go to Filters, Distorts, Emboss. Click on that. Again, we'll use the defaults here. Go ahead and click OK. And what I want to do now is take this lava texture, bring it to the top, and then I want to right click the, uh, the text layer at the bottom here. Right click that and go to Alpha to Selection. Come back up here to the lava texture layer. Go to Select, Invert, and then press Delete on the keyboard to delete all of the uh, outside area there. Then go to Select, None. And what I will do now is click and drag that beneath the other layer that we just created so that this embossed layer is on top of it. And what I want to do now is click on that top layer, the embossed layer. I want to set the blend mode to lighten only. And then I want to go to Colors, uh, Curves. And I want to take this bottom note over here and bring this to the right. You'll notice it darkening, darkening as I do that. And I'll take this note up here and I'll bring this down like that. And you'll notice as I do that you can see that the uh, the black areas of the uh, lava there are becoming more they're popping out a little more like they have more dimension to them and there's a uh, reflecting light off of them which is this node right here and right about there I'd say that's pretty good that's what I'm looking for right there I'll go ahead and click OK to finalize that and what I'll do next is I'll put a little bit of an outline around the text here so I'll right click on the original text layer down here right click that go to alpha to selection we'll go to select grow I'm going to grow this by two pixels and then I'll go to select feather and I'm going to feather that by two pixels as well. And what I'll do is I'll come up here to the background layer, select that, create a new layer on top of that and I'm going to grab the, uh, the uh, gradients tool and the gradient I'm going to use is I'm going to look for, uh, I believe it's called, I forget the name of it. I'll, I'll know it when I see it. Uh, there it is, Crown Molding. So go ahead and choose Crown Molding from those presets. Uh, we want everything else here the same as you see here. We want Shape, Linear, that's important. Everything else should be the same. And once we've done that, I'm just going to click and drag through here to create that gradient. I'm actually going to hold Control on the keyboard so it locks onto the vertical axis like that. Let go and then go ahead and press Enter to finalize that and go to Select, None. And what I will do next is I want to click on this background layer. I want to make this background layer a little lighter. So I'll go to Colors, Curves, and I'll take this node over here to the left and I'll bring that up slightly so that that background goes from being uh, black to more like a dark gray like that, which is what we're going for. Go ahead and click OK. And now I'm going to click on the layer above that, that uh, outline layer that we just created, and I'm going to add a drop shadow. I'll go to uh, Filters, Light and Shadow, and I will choose Drop Shadow. And you'll notice the preview pop up there. It's not quite visible. I want to make it a little more visible. So I'm going to bring the opacity up. I'm going to give it a little bit of a, a little bit more blur. And maybe I'll set the displacement a little more, or the offset rather. I'll bring that up a little bit as well. Right about there. That looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and finalize that. I'll click OK. And what I want to do next is add a little bit of a glow going around the top edges of the text here. So I'm going to take this text layer down here and I'm going to duplicate that and bring it to the very top. And then I'll duplicate it again and I'll go to Colors, Invert, and it's going to make it black. And what I'll do is I'll grab the uh, Move tool and I'm just going to take this black copy and move this down into the right a little bit so that you see a little bit of white sticking out of the edges there. And once you've done that, I'm going to take that very top layer, right click that, go to Alpha to Selection, Go ahead and delete that layer. And now once you have this top layer activated, you could press delete on the keyboard to get rid of those areas and go to select none to deselect that. And what I will do next is I will go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and give this a subtle blur. Maybe I'll go with four, four pixels, maybe five. Let's see how five looks. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'll set it to five, click OK. And I will set the blend mode to soft light. 
and I want to be able to see that a little more so I'm going to duplicate that layer and you'll notice you can see a little more of that effect it looks like, it looks like it's popping off the screen a little more so what we'll do next is we're going to work on the background here so I'm going to click on this background layer to select that and I'm going to grab the other image the other texture that we downloaded it's the scratch steel texture just click and drag that into the canvas here uh, again I'll have a link to all of these elements in the description below and I want to bring the opacity of that layer down a little bit and then I want to create a new layer on top of that so I'm going to click the button that says create a new layer and edit to the image I'm going to flip the uh, colors back around here so that black is the foreground I'm going to grab the gradient tool again only I'm going to set the uh, presets to uh, I want to use foreground to transparency as you can see here so what our foreground color is set to black you're, you're going to see in the preview icon here it's foreground to transparency and I'll start down here and I'll just bring this up like that hold control to lock it onto the vertical axis so that we have a gradient going from black to transparent like that press enter on the keyboard to finalize that and you might want to come back over here to your scratch steel layer and adjust the opacity accordingly we want to be able we don't want too much of this of the texture showing through up here we want it to be subtle but at the same time you want to be able to see some of this drop shadow down here so if I bring it down too much you're not really seeing much of the drop shadow at the bottom so I'm gonna bring it I'm gonna find a nice happy medium right about maybe right about there is pretty good and what we will do next is let me click on the very top layer I'm going to add a new layer to the image and I'm going to uh, swip, uh, swatch, uh, swap these two colors back around again and I'm going to grab the paintbrush tool and I'm going to grab the smoke brushes over here one of these smoke brushes I'm going to use brush number 19 you can use any smoke brush you like this step is optional you really don't need to do this if you don't want to this is just to add a nice finishing touch to the, uh, the, the uh, design here uh, I, again, I'll have a link in the video of the description where you could download these smoke brushes if you don't have them installed already. And let me just zoom out a little bit. And I'm just going to add, I'm going to add a touch of smoke right there. And I'm going to add a diff, grab a different brush. I'm going to add a little bit of smoke right there as well. And what I will do now is let me get rid of the, uh, let me grab the move tool. I'm going to take this layer and set the blend mode to overlay. And it's going to give that a nice subtle smoke sort of look and um, yeah that's that's what I'm going for right there so I think right here we're pretty much done there's just one final step which is what I did to uh, make the thumbnail look as uh, it, look, look, it looks like it just pops a little more than what we have currently what I did was I right click this and go to uh, new from visible and I adjust the color curves and the levels a little bit so to do that I go to colors curves and what I did was I took this node down here and I bring this up a little bit and then I create another stop right here and just bend that line down a little bit like that and if you toggle off the preview you can see the difference there it just makes it look a little more uniform uh, it just gives it a nice polished look let me go to the uh, blue channel I'm gonna add some blue to it by bringing this up as well you notice there's a little bit of a, a blue tint going into the steel there which adds a nice effect and then I will go to the red channel and I will slide this top one over to the left a little bit just to if you notice the uh, the uh, lava in the text there, it just it just makes it glow a little more. But you don't want to get you don't want to get too carried away with it. Maybe right about just very subtly is the trick. So I'll bring it right about there. Go ahead and click OK, and then I will go to colors, levels, and I'll just make the whole thing pop a little more by taking this stop, bringing it over a little bit. Then I'll take this stop, bring this over a little bit as well, and you can just adjust this to taste whatever you think looks good. I think right about there looks good I'll go ahead and click OK to finalize that and it's this is just an entire visible layer here you can toggle this off and on to see the difference if you notice here this is what we previously had and with this with these new color adjustments I just think it gives it a nice polished look so I think that should do it for this tutorial that's how you can go about creating that uh, molten lava text effect using GIMP if you have any questions let me know and as always thanks for watching